you're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. And today we get a chance to finally have a look at the Kremenko Z1 replica. The hardware has been finished for a while and has started shipping out to people, um, but the software is still a work in progress, something I'm hoping to complete re relatively soon. Again, the software is based on the incredible Z80 pack from Udo Monk, and uh, the Kremenko Z1 simulator, or the Kremenko sim, is part of the Z80 pack. Um, this is being ported to the ESP32, like it was for the IMSA 8080 replica. Today we're going to have a look at the three operating systems that are available for the Kremenko Z1. That's CPM 2.2, um, CDOS, or Kremenko DOS, and then finally Chromix, the Unix-like operating system from, Kreme from Kremenko for Z80 microprocessors. So we're just rebooting the ESP32, and then um, so we get the usual uh, console log coming up uh, to a console connected via USB, and then uh, I'll reach in and power on the Kremenko Z1, and we'll see the Z80 SIM start up. And you'll notice that the disk that's mounted in drive A is the CPM 2.2 um, disk. So the first thing will be to start um, CPM. In fact, before we do that, um, we'll actually just boot into the boot ROM, which is the Kremenko RDOS. It requires a few taps on the return key. Uh, RDOS is sitting there polling for input. And eventually you get this a memory test taking place. And by hitting escape at this point, we will actually um, boot into RDOS. RDOS is a, you know, like a lot of hardware monitors um, with, a, with the boot ROM code in it. So now we'll boot again and start up CPM 2.2. Usual commands, directory, um, we can do a survey and have a look at the memory map and the I.O. devices on that CPM can see. And then we'll shut down CPM with the buy command and look at rebooting into CDOS or Kremenko DOS. So now the CDOS disk is mounted in drive A and we go through that um, RDOS ROMDOS um, memory test and automatically boot through to CDOS. Now CDOS is very much like CPM, although some things obviously look a little different and some of the commands differ to the standard CPM commands. So we see the usual sort of system stats in a directory here, and then again we'll use the buy command to drop out of CDOS and reboot the machine. And now for this third time, we will find that we have the Kremenko sorry, the Kremenko Chromix Unix-like operating system disk mounted in drive A. And so when we hit return a couple of times to get through the boot sequence from RDOS, we will arrive at the um, Kremenko bootloader. Now that's asking for a major device. We only have floppies, no hard disks, so we choose one. And we'll start on floppy disk A, which is minor device zero. And Chromix um, initially wants you to put in the date and time, and you'll notice that it is actually Y2K compliant. And we'll log in as the system or you know, effectively the root user and just have a look at the root directory and the Chromix version. And then we'll do the shutdown command because like Unix, all Unix-like operating systems, we can't leave, afford to leave the file system in an, in an uncertain state. So shutdown correctly closes the file system. So now we'll take a look at the web user interface or web desktop and uh, Immediately, you can see that this is been given a Kremenko sort of theme to differentiate it from the um, IMSA 8080 web desktop. A um, few things are, not are noticeably different. The, the, uh, the wallpaper is of the Kremenko Z1 ZPU CPU board with a Z80 microprocessor on it. 
Um, the manual is different, uh, a different icon uh, from the Kremenko manual library, and the discs are black and not white. But the other um, glaring difference is that there is support for three teletypes, and each of these teletypes uh, has an enhanced mode. You'll notice uh, there's no longer support for uh, the PC code page, but in fact, uh, there's the Kremenko logo here. And when that mode is on, which is by default, these terminals emulate the Kremenko 3102 terminal, which is required by many of the applications in Chromix. Chromix did not have uh, sort of multiple terminal support and a cur N cursors library. Um, it expected a terminal from the Kremenko family of terminals that all supported a quite a distinct uh, terminal control code sequence. Uh, you can turn that off and they revert to simply VT100 terminals. Okay, well, let's go through the boot sequence and get Chromix started. And we'll log in again as the system or otherwise known as root user. And the D command is effectively the same as the CD command um, on normal Unixes and shows you your current path if you're not changing directory. But now we can go and open the other two teletypes or a uh, terminals and you'll notice that they're not connected by default so we'll connect them now and when we hit enter we get independent logins and we can log in there are a couple of demo users set up user one and user two and if we have a look at what's in their home directories you'll see that they have different contents and there are, in fact, on different paths. And you know, remember that this was a machine that was running a 4 megahertz Z80 microprocessor, but this is truly a, a Unix-like operating system. So it is um, multi-process, and each user is actually operating in their own independent bank of memory with a lot of smarts behind that uh, memory switching strategy but just to demonstrate things happening um, and the difficulty that the z80 has keeping up with the demands of three users we'll get a few different commands running so we'll run the version command on the bin directory as the root user and this will poll each executable in the bin directory and tell us what version it is so this takes a while to run um, We'll get the second user set up to do a long listing of the um, Etsy directory. And we will get the third user doing a long listing of the bin directory. So let's start each of these in sequence. And you will see how the switching between the processes is occurring with each one getting a little bit of time to display their output as they switch around so remembering you know that's doing everything that a multi-user multi-process operating system uh, should be doing in that it's managing disk access and it's uh, you know scheduling tasks to get all the users operating simultaneously now I haven't uh, learnt a whole lot about Chromix yet. Uh, that's a that's an adventure I'm yet to have. Um, my priority is to get this firmware completed uh, so that it can be released and people can start using it. There's a few things that I need to finish up in that regard. Um, not all of these peripherals are going to work, especially under Chromix. Uh, they should be working under. CPM 2.2 and under CDOS, things like the Dazzler and the uh, joystick attached to the um, D 
the seven uh, the the Kremenko, uh digital analog uh, board I/O board, uh, the paper tape reader, etc. Um, but for now, we've got a library with the three operating systems, and I'll sort of see what else comes in the Z80 pack for the Kremenko Z1 and put that in the disk library. You'll notice that the disks are decorated in the corners. I'm telling you because there is support for five and a half inch and eight inch disks, and single sided double-sided, single-density, and double-density disks. So there's a little uh, set of decals in the corner of each disk which tells you which format that disk is in. That's something different to what we saw on the IMSA 8080. Um, as I mentioned, the manual uh, is being going to be updated with the Kremenko documentation. At the moment, it's just got the documentation for the Kremenko screen editor. So while we're talking about that, let's have a look at screen and let's edit the message of the day. And you'll notice that when it's running, the Kremenko screen editor correctly displays uh, its menu at the top of the screen. Uh, we can switch to the alternate menu and back again. And when we exit, uh, the menus display correctly. And you're not going to see that on any other kind of terminal. That requires something that can respond to the escape sequences for the Kremenko, or for, yes, the Kremenko um, 3102 terminal or similar family of terminals. So that's what each of these um, terminals is emulating. Um, at the moment, there's only a single line printer. The Kremenko simulator has capacity for two line printers. So I'm just looking at extent, uh, creating a second line printer in the web desktop. And um, I would really like to introduce the same idea of the hardware abstraction layer that I put in the IMSA 8080 in the, into the Kremenko sim uh, so that it's much easier to mix and match devices and map things through to um, physical serial ports or to these web socket ports on the web um, desktop or in fact over um, regular TCP IP sockets so you can tell that in to the other users uh, from other devices. So a little bit of work to do to finish off the firmware. Uh, I guess we can just finish off by having a look at what we've got here in the system um, window. Um, it's giving us the memory map as we'd expect, the mounted disks and the usual stats uh, that we get in this dialog um, from having booted up the, the uh, emulator. All right, so um, that'll do for now. And hopefully it's only going to be a matter of weeks before I can release a version of this firmware. Thanks for watching. Oh, one last thing. We should bring up each of the uh, terminals and issue a shutdown. Whoop, spell it properly. And you'll notice that that shutdown is a broadcast message that reaches all users, warning them that there's a shutdown in five seconds. All right, bye for now.